you can't if if you are short a stock, you know, if you're a fund and you're short a stock, you cannot and, and, and can't correct me if this is wrong. You can't close out that short without delivering that stock, right? Which is which is to say, like, I can't if I'm short whatever and it's whatever. I'm, I you know I, I and I and I offer you a hundred dollars to close out the position, five hundred dollars to close out the position, a thousand dollars to close out the position, ten thousand dollars to close out the position. I can't close out the position without the actual share of stock because the the the, the because basically there you know there's in theory potentially a limited downside if the, if the stock keeps rising. Um, is that technically true? So, for ninety nine point nine nine percent of situations, <laughs> of which this was one of that ninety nine point nine nine, you had to buy the actual shares back if you were <laughs> short and trying to cover your short. So, for all intents and purposes, one should view if somebody's short a stock, they're going to have to one day buy those shares back <laughs> in the marketplace as a regular way trade. <laughs> Which, by the way, just out of curiosity, what's the point of one percent exception? You know, I sometimes professionals over the years, I've seen people willing to settle a short for cash in lieu, mm -hmm. but that's almost always the context of things like tender offers for a company. Okay, right. so if a company's being bought for stock, or sorry, for cash, let's call it, you know, General Electric's going to buy a company, they're going to pay twenty four dollars a share. Once the tender closes, if you were short that stock. Since the tender's closed, the company's been bought, you can, under those circumstances, settle your liability for cash. Yeah, but, yeah, but, but and what you're describing is, is a particular kind of bounded situation with presumably minimal risk. In yes, contrast, the, 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 the shares are gone, the company's been bought, and how do you, how do you wrap up that contractual right. situation amongst the parties? But if there's unlimited, if there's unlimited, if there's unlimited potential future downside, you can't get a counterparty uh, who won't settle, who will, who will trade, who will settle you out for uh, for anything short of the actual stock. If if one of the challenges that you have as a short seller is your risk is unbounded, right? And so that's that's why when when people are constructing portfolios of longs and shorts, their short positions tend to be much smaller than their long positions on a relative basis because the risk on the short side is unbounded in comparison to the risk on the long side positions. And then that, that leads to the second thing, which I'm just, you know, I'm just, I called up the game stock, the game stop stock price. I guess, I guess the terms game stop stock and stonk confused in my head all the time now. <laughs> um, but um, the game stop stock price, uh, you know, we're sitting here now, what, almost a year later, and it's still, um, the market cap, of the, the stock price is still $179 a share, um, uh, which is up, you know, it's up a thousand percent from uh, from a year ago. Um, and uh, the market cap of the company is, is almost $14 billion. And if you just look, if you look at the chart, it's, it's not quite, you know, it's, it's not at the all-time high that it got during the, the truly crazy period, but like, it's not that far off. It kind of peaked out at over 300 and it's still at 179. It certainly hasn't fallen back to where it started. Um, are you surprised that? And, and I guess you know, but, but I guess the logical implication of that is there are still, you know, the, the, you know, the suggestion I think that that price might be telling us is there are still funds out there that are short that haven't been able to buy back, and the Reddit the Reddit horde is still torturing them. Or is that is there some other explanation for? Or, or maybe the maybe the company's by the way much better, right? Is, is the other possibility? But like, are you surprised that that stock has held up? Because I, I think a lot of you know. The commentary at the time was obviously this thing is going back to you know near zero. Well, I you know I think it's it's incredibly complicated situation. First of all, the, the management team of the company did a great job of buying back its own stock, you know, ballpark two years ago at much much lower prices. <laughs> so the company the company bet on its own future and bought back a share, fair number of shares. I think it was in the single dollars per share back you know roughly two years ago and that's that's <laughs> rough strokes i'm not a, i'm not a GameStop expert per se but my members serves me right that's what they did about two years ago and then there's been a you know the rise of a significant new investor the founder of chewy <laughs> and he has an incredible reputation as being an entrepreneur yep. and of really understanding how to connect with the consumer in a profound way in an e-commerce environment and if somebody's going to figure out how to how to turn GameStop into a successful e-commerce based platform, he'd be high on the list of people to do it. Yeah, and right, that's that's the question: Can they pivot from several from a, from a huge footprint of stores around the world with a relatively high cost of distribution to an e-commerce led company 
with a broader mandate that's able to engage the consumer in a profoundly different way. And the market price today reflects people's views on, on that very same question. The, the current short position in the stock is, is actually quite trivial compared to what it was just a year and change ago. Mm -hmm. Virtually all the uh, short players are, are long since gone from this name. They've given up trying to understand how to price GameStop with, with, with uh, the founder of Chewy at the helm. Yeah. If you look at, by the way, if you look at the five-year chart, it, it looks, well, pardon, pardon the metaphor, it, it, it literally looks like a corpse that suddenly came back to life. Um, it, it's just this flat sag for like four years. And then there's this crazy spike, you know, during the, during the Reddit drama. And then there's this kind of choppy, but like fundamentally, as you said, kind of, you know, this, this kind of new, this kind of new normal, at least for the last, like whatever, nine months, um, I mean, the, you know, the, yeah, the question here is, and, and, you know, I, I play my Xbox. Yep. I just got called duty vantage. I downloaded it. I didn't walk into a store. Yep. Well, I mean, that was the that was the presumption, right? Prior to the Reddit, prior to the Reddit, the Reddit guys figuring out the you know the the, the short situation, right? That was the presumption, right? This, that this was, was the presumption. The presumption was right. the world was going to go to digital downloads so fast that GameStop would not be able to change its cost structure quickly enough to adapt to that brave new world, and they were going to meet the same fate as Blockbuster. Right, right, um, and, and Blockbuster actually dates you and I once again. Like yep. videotapes to a lot of people are just uh, like, like, like they seem in movies. They don't actually know that we actually went to Blockbuster and used to rent them. Well, there's actually Ken. There's a new Netflix movie coming out to just to pour salt in the wound. I think Netflix is just is making a movie. I, I think it might just have come out called uh, the 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 last Blockbuster. <laughs> <laughs> and it's literally a movie about the last video rental store so um I, I, at long last they've uh <laughs> i think they're spiking the uh the ball in the, in the touch in the, in the in the end zone so it's pretty but, funny and so that's the question is is will yeah. you know will the management team at at gamestop find ways to connect the consumer that are different than what they were doing three or four years ago that create value for consumers for which they get paid to do well, yeah and then the back, go ahead yeah. Good. Well, the, well, the reason I brought this up, the five-year chart, is it goes to the point you made. But I just want to explore one more, one, one more level, which is, um, you know, this is a situation like you can tell a very different story here. And the story basically is they had this, you know, they 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 were in trouble. Then they had this exogenous event caused by you know the mechanics of the of the stock market. And then to your point, like they have seized in the best case scenario, they've seized on the exogenous event to now construct a better future for themselves. Oh, um, no doubt, no doubt. And right. they raised they raised a tremendous amount of capital. To create a war chest that gives them the flexibility to pursue a variety of different business strategies. Yep. And so it's like this. It's like this unusual reverse move, though, where it's like it's. And, and by the way, we see this in our business, and it's it's speculation creating reality, right? Like potentially in a, in a really positive way. So that will that the markets will judge that in retrospect. Right. Were the people that bought GameStop stock from the company over the course of the last year brilliant or not? And we'll find out based upon the success, the, the failures or success, the merits of where GameStop takes their business. Yep. Good. Okay. Let, by let's the way, keep, that's yeah. what makes America's capital markets work. Differences right. of opinion drive our capital markets. I, just remember a few months ago, Hertz was left for dead in the middle of the pandemic. Yep. They were in bankruptcy. <laughs> And they went to raise money in the stock market, and the SEC said, you can't do it, an offering. You're, you're bankrupt. Yep. Right? And now Hertz is this incredible success story. Yep. So yep. I think we have to all have some level of um, humility about our ability to forecast how any given company is going to progress, prosper, or fail. Well, I think, I think that's one of the great things here is that it turns out retail is very smart. Sometimes called retail dumb money, but actually... And I mean, smart on Tesla, smart paradoxically on something like Hertz, which was bankrupt, um, and potentially smart on many of these others. One of my favorite things is if you Google Apple IPO Massachusetts, there's an article in the Wall Street Journal about how the state of Massachusetts, to protect the general public, banned their participation in the I Apple IPO, which is, of course, now the biggest company in the entire world. So it, it turns out sometimes retail investors are smart, and uh, you know I, I would argue that right now it's a better time to be a retail investor than ever before. Uh, you know I, I think it's always important to remember that that a number of your retail investors are they're intrinsically optimists, 
And yep. when they see a great product run and a, and a company run by an inspired CEO, they're willing to put their money on that. They're willing to believe in the future of America. They're willing to believe in the Tesla story. Yep. Yep. And get rewarded. Get rewarded. And get rewarded. And, 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 motivate, and, more, and motivate more entrepreneurs to build more companies like that. Mm-hmm. 